Hello and welcome back to Histology with Saleh. This is the fifth video in the series and in this video we will discuss about three big matters in histology plus some smaller ones. First being the autoradiography. Autoradiography is a method of localizing newly synthesized macromolecules. These macromolecules will be in cell or tissue sections that have been prepared. We have a molecule and this molecule is going to be radio labeled or labeled with radioactive materials. These molecules must be metabolites, meaning they could be either sugars, nucleotides, or they can be amino acids. These metabolites that have been radio labeled could be added either to the DNA or attached to the DNA or the RNA or the protein or the glycoprotein or the polysaccharide chains inside the tissue or cell sections. It would be in a way that sugars will be attached to glycoproteins or polysaccharides, nucleotides will be attached to DNA or RNA, and amino acids would be attached to proteins or glycoproteins. All of these, meaning the protein, the carbohydrate chain, the glycoprotein, the DNA strains, and the RNA strains, will then radiate some radiation or emit some radiation into the space that they exist in but this type of radiation would be weak radiation meaning they would cause no harm to other parts of the body or the tissues and meaning they would be limited or restricted to the region that they exist in in this technique of study the slide that is being prepared will have the cells on it and these cells would be labeled with uh, metabolites that have been radioactively labeled and or we have the tissues on the slide and these tissues would have their structures like the DNA, glycoproteins and the proteins and they all would, would be radio labeled. For this to happen and to be able to effectively be studied it has to be inside a dark room and inside that dark room we will have uh, to put photographic emulsion on it with this emulsion would have silver bromide crystals and these crystals would be coated on the slide the crystals of silver bromide will act as micro detectors of radiation on the slide and then this silver coated slide could be studied either through a light microscope or a transmission electron microscope. The usage of radioactivity in autoradiography can be either measurement of the DNA replication in the cells or in the cells of a specific tissue. In this method or for this purpose, radio labeled thymidine will be introduced into the cell. This thymidine is the DNA precursor, which means DNA will be made from it. Second usage is the measurement of protein synthesis, which also in this type of study, radio labeled amino acids, which are the precursors for the synthesis of the proteins would be introduced into the cells or into the tissue. Next we have cell and tissue culture. Every cell in the body of any organism of course has a life. This life of the cells can be either in vivo, which is inside the organism, 
and these cells have another type of life also which can be studied by the name of in vitro meaning outside the body or outside the organism that the cell belongs to the life of in vivo type the cells are bathed in fluid and this fluid would be same thing as plasma and having molecules for growth and survival of the cells the in vitro life of the cells for this matter instead of the plasma or the actual fluids some complex solutions would be prepared and the cells would be placed inside these complex solutions which will have the necessary salts like sodium potassium calcium and things like that the necessary amino acids for their growth and function and also will have serum since these compositions are not going to be enough for the growth and survival of every type of cells therefore some growth factors which are going to be specific to these type of cells will also be added to the culture material the cell and tissue culture is a complex procedure and needs many steps to be taken the most important methods that are widely used are the primary culture and the secondary cellular culture the primary culture is the most simple one and in this form the tissue or the cell is being dispersed mechanically or enzymatically from the tissue or the organ then this dispersed tissue or cell is put into a special dish through sterile handling and there it would be let to grow to survive and to live in vitro as it has been doing in vivo throughout its lifetime the method of secondary culture is in a way that in it the tissue or the cell is maintained preserved and the cell cycle is increased therefore the life of the cell is being increased this secondary method is also called transformation and through transformation a permanent cell line will be achieved this achievement is often happened by the actions of the oncogenes going forth we next have enzyme histochemistry enzyme histochemistry is also called cytochemistry enzyme histochemistry is a method of localizing cellular structures using enzymatic activity that are present in those structures for the enzymatic activities to be preserved we need to make sure that we don't do any fixation or use any fixatives in the preparation stages and if we have to do it there need to be used mild fixatives because heat and organic solvents do no good with the enzymatic activities and the enzymatic activities being demolished by the usage of heat therefore a cryostat is used to preserve these activities inside the cell in enzyme histochemistry there are some detectable enzymes these detectable enzymes include the group of enzymes called phosphatase these groups do their action by removing the phosphate group from the macromolecules there are dehydrogenases which uh, are a group of enzymes that each enzyme in this group does its action by transferring a hydrogen ion from one substrate to another and finally we have the enzyme peroxidase which transfers a hydrogen ion to the hydrogen peroxide 
Next, we have immunohistochemistry. Inside the living organism, there are probably trillions of trillions of molecular reactions and interactions. These interactions can be of many types. Of these interactions, the most specific type is probably the interaction between antigens and antibodies. Antibodies produced by the immune cells of the body and antigens regularly being known as the foreign bodies or the foreign things existing inside our body or entering our body through many different stages, many different methods. There is a very high affinity between the molecule of antigen and the molecule antibody. These two molecules bind to one another and the antibody deactivates the destructive functions of the antigen and with the help of the specific types of the white blood cells of the body tries to destroy it. This interaction between them are very specific and using this specificity the antibody is usually being labeled with uh, types of materials that can be tracked that can be found using different methods of imagery and uh, through this system while the antibody goes and finds the antigen which is usually a protein the antigen can be found antibodies in general are either polyclonal or monoclonal the polyclonal ones act non-specifically and the monoclonal ones act highly specifically. To do immunohistochemistry, there are two methods available, direct method and indirect method. To do and go through the direct method, an antibody is being labeled with substances that can be found, then that antibody goes and finds the protein or the antigen. The intrigue method is a method of sequential application of two different antibodies. These antibodies are being different from one another. It is going to go through a washing step or many washing steps. The primary antibody is going to be a specific antibody to a specific antigen, but it's not going to be labeled. The secondary antibody is going to be an antibody that is labeled and is detectable. This detectable antibody is going to be conjugated in another species different from the species that has synthesized or produced the primary antibody. As visible in this figure, the direct form and the indirect form of immunohistochemistry can be seen very easily. You can look at it and see for yourself how it is done. Now, while seeing a piece of tissue or some cells under the microscope, we need to have a good knowledge to be able to interpret it, to translate it, and to, to know what it actually tells us. Because the actual tissues in the body are in 3D form. Because the cells that form these tissues are in 3D form. But when we prepare these sections or slides from these tissues, it is going to be different. As said in the first video, these slides or sections are going to be very thinned, as thinned as the 3D form would be demolished, would be gone, and we will have literally and actually 2D forms seeing under the microscope. As seen in this image, the interpretation of the images under the microscope is a really hard 
and knowledge and experience oriented business. Having said that, we have reached to the end of the first chapter of John Cuero's basic histology. See you in the first video of the next chapter, which is going to be about cytoplasm. Thank you very much for staying with this channel and see you again in the next videos. Thank you for the nice comments, for the likes and for some minor shares that you did. Please do subscribe and stay tuned.